Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Hanlon. My pronouns are he, him, and I work on the React Native Core team at Facebook. Today, I'm here to talk about the web, specifically how we interact with the web. For a while, we've interacted with browsers in the same way, with a mouse and a keyboard. For good reason. These are great ways to interact with large screens. But first, let's take a look at the mouse. The mouse provides interaction feedback for pointing, hovering, clicking, typing, resizing, dragging, loading, and many more. And we're very familiar with these on the web. The keyboard provides a number of interaction types for typing, tabbing, submitting, modifying, canceling, moving, controlling hardware devices, and all kinds of other interactions. Over the years, we've refined these interactions and built complex user experiences to give feedbacks to users when they need it. Today, it's relatively easy to build websites to support these interactions. But then, smartphones. Smartphones didn't ship with a keyboard or mouse. Instead, we interact with the software through touch. And touch has a completely new set of ways to interact with UIs. We can tap, scroll, swipe, apply pressure, pinch, multi-touch, long press, and more. All of these are new and important interactions to handle on websites we build. In fact, I argue that touch interactions are the most important interactions to handle today. Because while we were busy building apps with a mouse and keyboard, the world started browsing our websites with touch. So that now, over 50% of website traffic is by mobile devices. And it's not just phones. We're not even including other touch devices like tablets, laptops, touch monitors, and touchscreen TVs. So touch is everywhere. It's the primary way the users browse web pages. This means that your website is more than likely being used primarily by users using touch. And it's not only touch devices. A significant minority of users are still using keyboards, mice, styluses, and more to browse our websites. And all of these interactions matter. Each individual action handled correctly can leave users with a positive experience. But if just one is handled poorly, users will notice these issues, and it will impact whatever metrics you care about. User satisfaction, conversion rates, reviews, or NPS. So today, I want to share a little bit about what we learned in React Native about touch interactions and some of the gotchas you might run into adding these interactions to your site. So I've provided a little demo. Get it up here. So I've built an app. It's a pretty simple app. It just has a, a scrollable list of elements. And you click on an element, and you can view the page and go back. It's about as simple as we can get. And we also have the same app running, running on mobile. So what I want to do today is implement some of these touch, some of these touch click, and keyboard interactions in this app. Um, to show you some of the different issues that you, your users might be seeing. So what we're going to need uh, is some kind of button or uh, element in order to click on these items. Um, we could use a uh, actual button HTML element, uh, but the issue with that is that you can't have block elements as children. So let's implement this. Uh, first, we'll need to import. React from React. Create a button. We'll need an on click with some props. And we'll need to return a div. Let's spread the props. Create an on click handler. And export all button. Cool. So we load this up. We get our uh, basic button component. So let's start diving into some of the things that we're going to need to add to this button. First thing that we notice is that there's no feedback when we mouse over any of these uh, list items. So we'll need to add the ability uh, to, we'll need to add a hover interaction. 
Well, we can uh, do this with CSS, class name hoverable, styles, we'll add a hoverable class, and we'll just dim it a little bit in order to show the hover. Cool. This works great on desktop. Let's see what this looks like on mobile. Wait, what happened? And see, on mobile, we have this issue where we click on it once, and it gets stuck in this hover state. And then you, tap, you have to tap on it again to go into, to actually register the click. And this is a known issue with Safari on um, mobile devices. And it's just something that you have to learn to deal with. So it turns out that we actually can't use CSS if we want to support uh, these kind of hover interactions. That's fine. We can delete the CSS. And uh, hooks are really hot right now, so let's use some hooks to track the state. On mouse enter, handle mouse enter, on mouse leave. We'll need to add these handlers. Set active true. Set active false. Um, and when it's true, we'll dim the opacity, otherwise we'll keep it full. All right, so we've implemented Hover in user land. Let's go and see what we got here. Uh, and we have Hover on desktop, and on mobile, we don't have this uh, stuck state. But what we've lost on mobile uh, is the feedback interaction when you tap on the buttons. And this is because the browsers actually emulate uh, touch events in order to handle uh, smartphones when they first came out. Um, and since we have removed the CSS, uh, the browser's not emulating anything. So we can fix this by implementing some uh, touch events. Uh, we'll need a handle touch start, set active true, handle touch end, on click, set active false. One thing to note here is that um, these... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, one thing to know here is that these uh, touch events are emulated uh, on, as uh, mouse up events. So when um, you use the if you use the mouse up events, then you'll need to you'll actually have the active set twice. But this is fine. Um, we're also going to rename this to a touchable component um, because it's no longer a button component because it has uh, press handling. Uh, so if we load this up, this is great. Um, we can t uh, click on things, and over on the mobile app, we uh, get feedback when we press. So that handles uh, mouse and uh, touch interactions, but we don't have any keyboard interactions. Uh, when we tab over here to the um, different components, we're not actually going to anything that's clickable, and users expect to that uh, clickable elements are tabable. That's fine, we can implement this. Uh, we'll add a tab index to add it to the tab order and add a uh, key press function, uh, event.key equals enter, and call the on press. So if we load this up, then we now have touch event, uh, um, keyboard events. That's great, um, but what about disabled states? If some of these elements are disabled here, we have to add uh, handling for that manually. We, that's fine, we can do this. Let's add a disabled prop. If it's not disabled, uh, we'll add a bunch of switches in here. Uh, and if it's not disabled. Um, and finally, if it is disabled, we're gonna remove it from the tab order with the negative one. So now, when we load this app up, we now handle the disabled states. And over on the mobile app, you can see you can't click on anything that's disabled. Great. What, what's next? Um, what's next is uh, cancelability. So on touch devices, uh, what you expect is when you tap and drag away, 
that the touch interaction is canceled. Uh, this is a very common thing that we just expect to happen in apps um, that we haven't implemented here. So that's fine. Uh, I guess we can continue building this up. Uh, this is turned into a monster. We're going to need uh, some position uh, to track when it's activated. Uh, so we have set position and activate, set position, use some state. And then uh, when you first press in on the button, you'll need to track, you'll need to compute um, where the button is. And then as you move, you'll need to constantly update that to check if you're still within the button. We can do that by setting the position equal to the current target's bounding rect. Uh, and then on touch move. It's not disabled. We can set active. Is touch active? Event. Now let's implement this is touch active function. We can get the x and y coordinates of the touch from the event. And then we can get the top, left, width, and height out of the original position that we saved. And then compute a few values. Is it below the top? Is it before the right boundary? Is it above the bottom boundary? Is it after the left boundary? And then return all of them. Math. Finally, uh, when you release the touch, you'll need to uh, apply the event if it's active. So we can do that if it's active, only if it's active, and clear the position. Cool. Let's see what we got. We're still working on desktop and on mobile. We're canceling when we, when we leave the box. You can see as soon as we leave the box, we're canceling. But what's important here is that if you enter the back into the box, we also register it. This is an experience that users expect on mobile. OK, great. One thing uh, about touch devices is that um, unlike a mouse, which has a defined pixel that defines the click, uh, on touch devices, you have an area of clicks. So you can see that we have this circle here. So if I were to tap here, would I mean to activate the click? Yes. Um, so what we do is we implement what's called a hit slop, which is uh, essentially a margin around touchables that if you still click inside of that area, then we still apply the click. This is pretty easy to implement. Uh, we got hitbox is 50. We can update our maths, and give it a try. So now you can see if we are outside of the button, and I'm pretty far outside of here for demonstration purposes, but if we get outside of the button, then we still apply the click. Which is great. Um, that This component is starting to get pretty big. Um, it has a lot of different edge cases to handle. The, Last one that I want to take a look at is this scrolling. So you can see as we scroll, we're actually activating the hover state. Um, we're activating the active state on these until we scroll away from it far enough. And this is not a great user experience because um, users aren't expecting to tap when they scroll. And we can fix this problem by implementing a uh, delay timeout. So let's do a delay. Current target, event.target, delay timeout. We'll delay it 300 milliseconds. Um, so what we're doing here is we have to uh, capture the event since um, it, they're reused. Uh, we'll delay the timeout uh, and then do our positioning calculation. Uh, and then when it ends, we'll make sure that we clear the timeout. So if you end before the timeout fires, then we're not going to actually uh, compute the Active, uh, update the active state. So if we do this, then when we scroll, we're not activating any of the any of the hover states until we press for too long. So that's just another problem that we have to take care of. 
we have a lot more problems that we need to take care of. Um, we actually want to cancel on scroll instead of uh, just using a delay. We'll need to add stylus support. Uh, let's add, uh, we we'll actually need to switch to pointers for stylus support. Pro pointer events give a, um, a type that tells you what type of event it is. Uh, we'll need to add long press support, uh, accessibility support, support for different element types, hide the outline when you click on it. We'll need to optimize this because we're constantly just setting state on every move and more and more. It turns out that this is a lot harder problem than we thought it was. If we want to be able to handle all of the different devices on all of the different platforms in all of the different browser environments. It turns out that abstractions are hard. And this abstraction of consistent cross-browser and cross-platform behavior is really hard. It's difficult to consolidate decades of legacy browser APIs with these new interactions, all while dealing with emulated behavior. We've made some movement on these, these problems today. React Native Web is a library created by Nicholas Gallagher during his time at Twitter. Nicholas is now on the React core team working on this problem. React Native Web is a library that strives to solve this by exposing React Native APIs to web apps, combining all of the touch, keyboard, and mouse events into the React Native Web components. In fact, if you've used the new Twitter desktop site the past couple of days, you've seen their new design, and you've used React Native Web. Twitter now deploys a single progressive web app using React Native Web that dynamically adapts at runtime. There's no mobile or desktop site or even touch versus mouse. Instead, they use React Native abstractions to provide a single app that handles all these interactions on one site. React Native Web is great, but despite all the UX value, it isn't perfect. Under the hood, it depends on an unofficial API in React DOM, combined with a number of user land hacks that we have saw earlier. If you've been paying close enough attention, you've seen that the React team is investigating changes to React Core based on what we've learned from React Native and trying to bring React Native to web. But this is an evolving space. We're still learning how this new wor world works and what abstractions we can use to achieve consistent cross-device and cr cross-platform behavior. For now, what we can say for sure is that it matters and continues to matter more every day. Thank you.